Hi. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Ira Sacker, and I'm your host tonight. We're calling our show Healing with Music. Let's meet our panel first. Bill Hirschman, a theater critic and chief editor for FloridaTheaterOnStage.com. Karen Stevens, an award-winning actress and writer. And sitting in for Michael McKeever tonight is Jeffrey Bruce, who's an actor, vocalist, and director. And our guest today, who is a musical savant. What does that really mean? It's in your biography. Doug Tesla is a musical savant. Well, well people call me that, and I think the reason is I never had any training. So all my musical abilities are just from basically God-given, you know. I, I just, I can play any instrument. And you do play 30 of them, I understand. Yes. 30 instruments. I wouldn't ask you to name them, but, <laughs> and that's, do you read music? I, I do read music now, but I didn't before. I, I you never had instruction, mm -hmm. never had? Very little. Went to classes, you just feel the music? Yeah. And feeling this music with the various <laughs> instruments, you're gonna play a couple for yes. them eventually, has helped you heal others with your music. Yes. How? Not only heal others, but, but it, it started with me. I had to heal myself. Because? I, I was a kid that had lots of sicknesses like allergies and asthma and all this stuff and playing, playing these instruments healed me. Wow. Well, I can understand something like that. Uh, usually, <clears throat> Uh, people who are, well, not ill necessarily or have problems, even as actors, you get up on stage and the applause, yes. whatever invigorates yes. you, exactly. as far as that goes. Yes. Uh, I wonder if we could start off with your actually playing something for us. Sure. Now, um, uh, and your instruments are unusual to begin with. Yes. But fortunately, I think I've requested that. I did that for you. For me, how nice. <laughs> okay, should we start with that? Is this still a flute? Yeah, this so, is a this is a bass flute. So it's still a flute, but it's it's a one octave below a regular concert C flute. So these are very rare, and and so that's why I brought it so you could hear it. Okay, I'm, I'm curious. Go. <laughs> write music as well? Yes, I do. I actually have two CDs that are out and it's, you know, basically healing modality, you know. And Doug, it's, it's very hard to categorize you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. when, when you think of other flautists, uh, Jean-Pierre Rampal comes to mind, obviously, yes. he's the most famous as a classical flautist. Yes. Uh, where do you put yourself? Because in your biography it says you're an intuitive musician. Yes. Now, to an average person, and especially to <clears throat> actors, we know what that means, but with music and the fact that you started without any actual training, uh, do you consider yourself clairvoyant in any way? Do Absolutely. You, you do? Yes. What am I going to say next? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, like you it. do? You actually do? Oh, yes, yes. Interesting. Um, um, when I, did you come to that discovery? Well, when I was a young boy, um, I had some amazing experiences. Like? Like one morning I was crying and I came to my dad and I said, our bird, Hansi, died. And he said, how did you know? <gasps> oh. You killed it. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. Good word. Well. So I, I mean, I didn't, I just, I was crying because I guess in a dream, uh, I dreamed you know, that, that I our bird. I think we all have experiences like that. And, so, um, really? Did it die? 
Yes. Oh. But how does that work when you're playing? Well, here's the thing about my playing, too. I was also born with perfect pitch. And not just perfect pitch, but I have recognition of any music that's played to me so I can predict where the music is going to go. And I don't know how to explain that other than if you see me play with, with a new band, I don't know their music, and within the first two, three measures, I can just start to fit in. Well, yeah, that, that's important. You were saying, <clears throat> you're, you, you mentioned CDs, you're talking about a band. One of the things we haven't actually mentioned is what you do to pay the rent. What is your profession? <laughs> oh. You don't say musical <clears throat> savant on your on your. No. W2 I'm actually, form. <laughs> I'm a co um, computer engineer, and I'm also a video producer, engineer, editor, you know, so. And you yes. didn't have to get trained in any of that either, did you? <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> that, I, that well, was, but musically, what do you do? I mean, you play with bands. I play do you have with, a regular band? What, what, what yes, do you, I play how in do a, you let your music come out? I play in um, one orchestra, and I also play basically with a lot of female folk singers, you could say. And I also do, I think I'm pronouncing this right, kirtan or kirtan, which is, okay. it's kind of like chanting and a lot of these female vocalists, they hire me and, and I, I play flutes and different instruments for them. I'm really curious what the first instrument was that you picked up yeah. that you, you know, just started playing. That would be piano playing. and voice. Piano, yeah. And voice, okay. yeah. Did you study piano? I, I kind of did, but then I, I, you know, I was so young that my parents couldn't really get me into it, so I quit. And then it all came naturally afterwards without yes. any formal training. Yes, hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Accordion? I did play accordion, too. <laughs> you name it, he well, plays Well, I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? <clears throat> I mean. but, but I get notoriety for one instrument that I play that's very simple. Is this a plain blue recorder? And I'm sorry I didn't bring that, but um, I can play the recorder like any kind of music, jazz, classical, whatever. Yeah, wow. On just a little recorder. Some people have trouble switching from genre to genre. Do you just see it as a whole or do you mentally switch <laughs> gears or I something think, else? Well, music is just a language. That's all it really is. So if I'm playing jazz, it's just another dialect. If I'm playing classical, it's another dialect. If I'm playing, you know, worship music or klezmer or whatever, it's all it's all the same. It's just a different uh, dialect. Dialect. Yeah. I like that expression. Yeah, to yeah. Use it that, way. that makes a lot of sense. But you have to learn each dialect. Absolutely. So, I mean, to be yeah. Yeah, well, I got feel it. it the way he says it. It sounds like you just feel it. It's I have matter? some amazing experience where I'm playing music and all of a sudden I start to, to cry and I don't know why. But I guess the music really moves me to the point sometimes where it's an emotional thing. On that note, we're talking about healing through the arts. Yes, yes thank you. And <clears throat> I'm wondering how you feel or experiences that you've had with people who are unwell uh, the experience that you've had with them <clears throat> and what kind of an effect, a visceral effect, that the music had on yeah. these particular people. I can people. tell you something that just happened two weeks ago. Sim, who's my partner, we go to a drug rehab uh, facility in Delray mm -hmm. and we do a little workshop to teach them things like breathing techniques and uh, relaxation and then I play my dig and flutes and so one of the girls in the room, because I take the ditch and I go over the people, which I'll do now if you want. And, <laughs> and so this one girl started to cry and she came up to me and she says, thank you so much. Says, you, you healed something in me. And she was only 18 years old. Oh, I love to and, hear that. I love to and, hear that. What about with it, children? <clears throat> uh, uh, autistic children <clears throat> specifically. Absolutely, this is yeah. so good for them. You can you relate know. to them and they to you yes. when it comes to that. They, they like these unusual instruments because... But what is this instrument here on the flute? I'm fascinated. Uh, this is a Native American flute, but it's a double chamber. So I can play this and I use this for um, kind of like ceremony, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. check it out.
arrive at the point where you realize or you saw a need that f for healing? I mean, how did that come about, healing through your music? Okay. <clears throat> In 2007, my mom got very sick and she, she was not going to make it. And um, I said to her, I'm going to do a change in my career. I said, I'm going to take up flute, because I never played the flute. And um, she says, yeah, do it, do it, do it, you know? And so that was an impact on me that all the years I was doing, you know, mostly television production, you know? Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> I wanted to try something that was more um, healing for me and that I really, really enjoyed, you know, which was the music and the arts. So. I think it's wonderful to just pick up an <clears throat> instrument and play. I mean, I've seen you with the saxophone and yes, as, yes. as well, you know. I feel like this is just part of me now. Doug, yeah. with the healing, I'm just curious, yes. uh, just going back a little bit, <clears throat> people who are dementia patients, <clears throat> people who are Alzheimer's patients, people yes. who are not <clears throat> there at the moment, do you think that it's like after a loved one dies with your mom, the first Mother's Day, that kind of thing that triggers things. Do you think that the music that you play somehow triggers something in their brain that can either give them more lucidity or bring them back to... With Alzheimer's, that's so tough. It's hard, but I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I had heard of, though, <clears throat> well, that I'm, music can... <clears throat> yes, yeah. I played for a lot of dementia, Alzheimer's wow. patients. And? Some of them react and some of them don't. <clears throat> So, you know, it just depends. But, but, you know, a cynical people out there, because none right. of us are, but for the cynical people out there, they hear this and they're going, oh, come on. Can you explain to people what it is you think, you must have thought about this a great deal, <clears throat> what it is that you're doing and how it manages to touch people or open them up or heal something inside? What is it about the music? Are, are you speaking to them through the music? <clears throat> are they just reacting to something inside them to the music. Because it's, there are people out there that are going, oh, come on, give me a break, buddy. Exactly. So, so what <laughs> I was going to say is there is now scientific data that shows that vibrations, you know, they, uh -huh. they do different things to the body and different frequencies react differently to the body. And they even said that some frequencies help the blood flow faster, right? And the didgeridoo, this particular instrument has a low enough frequency that it penetrates um, like two to three inches into your body. And so that vibration does something. And, it, and there is a scientific explanation for that. But beyond that, it's, it's a mystical thing too. That very, very mystical. mystical. Yeah, yeah, well, that's mystical. what I'm hearing. That's, um, <clears throat> that's really curious because, I mean, I believe in vibratory frequencies. And right. um, I've often, I have also heard it said that um, a cat's purring can have a exactly. healing effect on you because yes. of the frequency of yep. it. So when my cats lay on me at night and purr, <laughs> I'm just like, go for it, just purr, purr, purr. But, it's um, true, that's right. Do, is there, do you, do you have a scientific scale for what frequency is best for what ailment or? Well, the human body, by the way, the optimum frequency for optimum health is I believe 82 kilohertz, you know? <clears throat> so if it falls below that, you start to suffer from, you know, colds and flu. And so basically from 75 to 82 is optimum. If you go below that, then you start to get sick. So yeah. And so is there's a, there's a natural frequency that, with, that is within each person's body. Absolutely. Naturally, right? So yes. sometimes, people operate at a higher frequency than others. Is there a way for people to up their frequency, Yeah, the, so the to number speak? one <laughs> way is relaxation and meditation. Oh, yes. but yes, yes, meditation, which is, you know, some people <clears throat> have a problem meditating. I say some people, I'm one of those people. <laughs> but I do, I do try and I go for meditation. And, uh, but music, you know, because I, I think music, it eliminates your thoughts <laughs> of other things. I think what's very hard when it comes to meditating is to eliminate what's going on in your life Absolutely. and what's going to happen and what <clears throat> happened, but music will do that. What about teaching? I don't have a natural ability. I sing 
and uh, and I dance. I have rhythm, but I I I don't have the patience to sit and learn a piano. <clears throat> and uh, can you? Could you teach me to play an instrument? Absolutely, I'm a Abs good teacher. Really? Yes. What should I learn? Well, I would teach you probably Mary Had a Little Lamb first. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I Everyone would... <laughs> starts off with yeah. Mary Had a Little Lamb. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> How time consuming is that? <laughs> You're laughing, it's true. No, I when, when I teach uh, young no children. No time and no patience. <laughs> I teach young children sometimes, and they play the recorder. And I don't go by the notes, you know, because they're too young. So I do ear training with them. And so they hear a song, and then they play it back. That's Professor Harold Hill's The Think System from oh, The Music really? Man. Cool. No, I'm being. <laughs> <laughs> Are okay. you the only one who does this? No. Are you, there are other people who? There are, but I would say the around town I'm considered you know everybody knows who I am you know as far as what I'm doing playing for yoga studios doing all mm -hmm. kinds of um, in incredible work for the community and a lot of times I don't even get paid so it's it's not about the money you know it's about helping just one person mm -hmm. that's wonderful really. to hear yes. you brought some monster uh, instrument. Oh yeah, this is. Yes. Can I help you with that? <laughs> this is a didgeridoo, and um, this wow. is the most ancient instrument. Um, it dates back sixty thousand years. Really? The Aborigines um, discovered this in kind of a fluky way. There was a, a eucalyptus tree that was being basically um, it, the termites ate through the whole thing and. It was windy, and, and I guess the wind hit it a certain way that it made a sound. And so they started to use this for communication and healing. And so, that, and so I discovered it. And the thing with the didgeridoo is, you'll see when I play it, um, I do a thing called circular breathing, which means I never stop breathing. So I'm breathing in and breathing out, but it's constant. And um, who would like to, for me to do a healing? Okay. I need, I need. Here she goes. Heal. <laughs> okay. Can I step out to here? Um, well, I don't know. Can you do it right from there? Yes, I okay. will. It'll be tough. <laughs> do I need to do anything? Um, no, just close your eyes. Oh. <laughs> Um, How do you feel? Yeah. Um, my firstborn will arrive in nine months. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-purpose instrument. <laughs> no. So you felt, you felt yeah, the vibration. Yeah, I could feel the vibration, definitely, right. yes. And right. especially that last one, it, would, it, it was what kind it of piercing. Down. Yeah. If I could feel it physically. The last yes. one is actually, it's called a... Um, a trumpet uh, part of the dig, and this dig only has two, two or three tones, you know? So when I blow it really hard, it does that trumpet thing, mm -hmm. and that's why it's yes. got a high, higher frequency. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How, you do you, can actually how do you feel modulate that? that? Because yeah. I've heard others, mostly in films and things right. where I've heard somebody playing it, and I, I guess I assumed that there were holes, but no. they're not. How are you Is this changing all me? The, I'm, the I'm doing it from my my abdomen, you know, uh -huh. and I'm basically uh -huh. working the yeah. muscles, but there's really not much going up here. It's, it's really right this area, the core. Wow. You know? So like when I do it, you'll see my breathing too. Yeah. I'm breathing through my nose when I run out of... Mm -hmm. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. And cool. I do noises <laughs> through yeah. it. And, now, yeah. uh, did you make this one? No, no. It was made by a friend, and it's, this is agave, so it's very light. Feel how light that is. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. That is yeah. very light. So agave is, you know, where you get the syrup from, you know? Yeah. Cactus. 
Doug, with the different frequencies, and you just uh, work with Karen, do, are, are the frequencies different? Do you find, is there a difference between men and women? Um, that's a good one. Yeah, you know, it seems like women are more... Um, Susceptible? They're some more sensitive to, well. to the vibrations. Yeah. Because like I said, that one girl, she was crying yeah. because of the frequencies. She, she was affected by this when I went over her body, and she was like, I mean, literally in tears. Yeah, it affects me that way very often. Oh. I do cry at, with music. I just love it so. Uh, and I think that music affects different people in different ways. Absolutely. And as far as that goes, and uh, you're at the point. Uh, okay, so we're out of instruments. So let's talk. Okay, I'm going to put this away because someone could trip what, over it. What, what other instruments that you use for healing? <clears throat> okay, the other instruments I use, I have these quartz crystal bowls, you know, you've seen them. And oh, you do the bowls, that's so good for yes. meditation, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Do you know what that is? No, tell me. Okay, oh, crystal it, bowls are basically made out of quartz crystal, mm -hmm. and they were discovered, uh, IBM used to make them because they used to seed the crystals in there to make for the CPUs. So uh -huh. basically they grew these crystals in these containers, and then they threw the containers away. But then people said, oh, wait a minute, Maybe these balls have a use, and that's what happened. And they, they became do. musical it's balls. Wonderful. What do you do with them? Well, you, you have a stick, and you, you kind of like rub it on the side of it, and, and it, it goes. And it makes different mm -hmm. sounds. Mm -hmm. It really is you know, wonderful. Like, wonderful. And they're empty. Wonderful There's no experience. water or anything. No, no water. And they come in every size, you know, small, big, large. They come in uh, gold. They come in all different types of uh, crystal. And that's an instrument. Exactly. It, it, do you play them? Is it possible or is the intent to play any kind of melody or just to create a sound and a vibration? Really sound and vibration. Sound, yeah. I've heard some people have like 10 bowls and they were playing, you know, Different songs songs. on it, but it's not typical. Because back when we were kids, Sherry Lewis used to do this thing with glasses <laughs> with various yes. amounts of water in it. Yes. And she would run her finger around it. Exactly. But she would play melodies on it. Right. That's why I was wondering. Yeah. Isn't that what Sandra no, it, Bullock it, did in... Miss Congeniality. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Could well be. <laughs> when I want to relax, I listen to harp music. Harp I was just going to say, uh, Sim plays the harp, and she was going to bring it, but we we forgot it. And it's the harp is beautiful, really. Is. I find that very relaxing. The harp and the flute. Yeah. I mean, really. The, yeah. Yes. The yes. Flute. Definitely. Are um, there are there instruments that you play that 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 you go, I'll bet people don't even think about this. Are there, that, that on your list of 30, oh, yeah. that you go, what are some of the more unusual instruments that people well, don't, I was going to bring one today, of? it's called the shakuhachi. Say that again. Shakuhachi. Okay. okay. It's a Japanese flute, over 2,000 years old, and it's transverse, so <clears throat> it has a very unusual opening in it, and it's probably the most difficult flute to master. And so, <clears throat> it has a very haunting sound, and you've probably heard it, but you don't you don't know it by name. Well, <clears throat> does everybody play <laughs> these instruments? I no. mean, thirty <clears throat> instruments. You have thirty people who play, you know, play each one, and you play them all. <laughs> but um, and again, I can't get over it that you have you just play. As we say, by ear, it's just you just pick it up and play it. Yes. Does that include drums? <clears throat> oh yeah. As well. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've heard you play saxophone, <clears throat> and uh, you're part, that. yes, uh, part of an ensemble. Yes. And when you make this decision, you're playing. They have all these instruments around you, and <laughs> I've been present. Like, and sometimes you pick up the saxophone, and then you, I mean, uh, and there's no leader of no, that group. No. But you all, uh, and you don't have any music in front of you. I remember all of it. It's, all of you. Yeah. All of you remember. That's yeah. another thing that I think is fascinating. When you sure. play in, a, in an ensemble, do you play, is it all extemporaneous? Is it all improvised no. because you don't have music <clears throat> in front of you? No, because we have rehearsals. So we rehearse, go over the music. Is it new age more than, for lack of a better? No, it no. Ac actually it's very like structured now. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and very beautiful. Yes. And very beautiful. Where did you hear Doug? In my temple. That's where uh, he's part of this <laughs> ensemble. 
and um, and the songs are not religious songs. No, it's they're just more like spiritual. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, um, <clears throat> although we have a very unusual situation because we start off services by dancing, <laughs> and yeah. uh, which is my joy. <laughs> and uh, we, and singing, we dance and we sing, and it's a wonderful, wonderful spiritual experience. Wow. <laughs> Temple Adath Awe is what it is. And I was just saying that I'd love to get our rabbi on because he's so musical. He's always got the guitar <laughs> playing from it. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience. And this has been a wonderful experience. Yes, thank you. Doug, thank, thank you. you. I'm so glad thank that you, you agreed to come. Thank just you. fascinating. <laughs> Isn't, it, isn't this wonderful what, I, what we bring to, to, to the public? I say, educational. This was educational as well. <laughs> I hope you had such a good time. We had such a good time. You can tell how much we enjoy doing what we're doing. And we're grateful that you do watch us. And let me tell you that if you want to find out what's going on in that world out there, especially theater, just go to floridatheateronstage.com and please continue to watch us for another educational, perhaps spiritual experience next week as well on Spotlight on the Arts.